Create a React app using Tailwind CSS version four. Today, I'm gonna assume you have some knowledge of React. If you want a beginner friendly tutorial from scratch, check out this video here, and I'll also leave it in the description. Links to all of the resources and source code today will be available below. And make sure you guys watch this entire video because some of you might be used to using version three and prior, and there are a few different differences to make this all work with version 4. In VS Code, I'm going to open the folder where I want to create this project. Now I'm going to create a new terminal and open a command prompt. And you guys need to make sure that you have Node and NPM installed for this all to work. So I'm going to go ahead and run a Node dash v and make sure i have a version installed and i'll run npm dash v to make sure i have npm installed make sure you guys update to the newest versions so this will successfully work now i'll run npm create v at latest to create my react application here i'll just put a period and then this package name is fine so i'll hit tab enter and then i want to select react and i'm going to use javascript you guys can use TypeScript if you want here and then we'll also run npm install to install all of our dependencies and to make sure that this is successfully installed I'm going to run npm run dev to open my live server now you guys can see that my live server is successfully running with the default code what I want to do now is navigate to the SRC and delete all of the styling in my app.css and all of the styling in my index.css. And in my app.jsx, I can get rid of these first three lines here, get rid of this state because I'm not going to be using it. And all of this code inside the fragment, I'll go ahead and delete. Now you guys can see we have a nice blank canvas. Now in the browser, I wanna to go to Tailwind CSS, and this link will also be available in the description for you guys. I wanna to navigate to Docs, and then I wanna to go to Installation using V right here. And I can copy this installation statement go back to VS Code, create a new command prompt, and simply run this statement here. And after this is done running, make sure it successfully installs in your package.json under dependencies. And more importantly, make sure it's installing version four or whatever the newest version is when you're watching this video. Next, we need to import Tailwind CSS into our config file. So I'll go ahead and copy this import statement, go back to VS Code and navigate to the v.config.js. And we'll go ahead and import this statement and then we'll go back to the documentation here copy our tailwind css plugin then go back to vs code and simply paste this right before our react plugin and make sure you don't get rid of react because if you do it will mess up your entire application because react is being imported right here in this file now back in the documentation we'll scroll down and copy this import tailwind css statement and this needs to be imported into your index.css file just like this and then this should be set up by default, but go to your main.jsx file and ensure that your index CSS is being imported here. Now, all we need to do is go back to Tailwind CSS. We'll go ahead and copy this sample H1 element here, go back into our app.jsx, and we can simply paste that right here. And since we're using React, we need to make sure that this is class name and we can go back to our live server now and what i'll do at this point is put this on the right side with the code editor on the left you guys can see that it is being styled but just to make sure it is working for you guys go ahead and remove all of these classes here you guys will see that it changes and if we undo that you guys can see that the tailwind css styling is being applied now i can close out of my terminal navigate to extensions and i want to search for Tailwind CSS IntelliSense, and it should be the first one here by Tailwind Labs. Make sure you install this and have it enabled. 
but make sure that you guys do not follow these installation instructions here. It's going to tell you to set up a tailwind.config file and all this extra stuff. This will only work with Tailwind CSS version three and prior, we need to follow a different set of steps to set it up for version four. So what we wanna do is go into our settings. We wanna search for our settings.json and go ahead and click on this so we can edit. What you guys wanna look for first is gonna be the Tailwind CSS.suggestions. This is most likely gonna be set to false what we want to do is set it to true. And from here, we can scroll down and we need to search for our Tailwind CSS.experimental. Yours is going to be set to null. What we want to do is set this to wherever we're importing our Tailwind CSS. So we're importing it in the index.html css file so that's what we want to specify here instead of null and make sure you go ahead and save this then we can navigate back to the app.jsx we'll go ahead and remove all of these classes right here and then we'll go ahead and try and type in a new one so now if we type in text it's going to help with suggestions straight from tailwind css so this is sizing. We can also choose from colors. We can also choose pretty much anything we want from Tailwind CSS right here as a suggestion, instead of having to go back and forth between VS Code and the documentation on tailwind.com. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this H1 element because we don't need it anymore. Next, what I'm gonna do is set up a couple components so we can start developing some stuff in React. If you guys need help creating components, check out this video here, and it will also be available in the description, and then I'll get back to you guys. Now you guys can see that I have a components folder set up within my SRC here. I created a hero component and a navbar component. Both have a JSX file and a CSS file, and I'm successfully importing those into my app.jsx and displaying them here. And we can double check this by looking in our live server. And I'm also gonna be using Font Awesome today, so I'm just gonna go to my index.html and import the Font Awesome 6 CDN right here. And before we start creating content, I wanna take you guys back to Tailwind here, navigate to the docs, and I wanna scroll down here where you guys can see all of the different styling that you can use. There's layout, flexbox and grid, there's colors, spacing, sizing, font weight. And you guys can click on each one of these and kind of explore them. And you can also search for what you need here. So if I wanna search for colors, simply type that in and it's going to give you options of a whole bunch of different colors here that you can use in your code if you scroll further down a little bit it'll show you how to apply it as a background and if you keep going it will show you how to apply those colors on text but for now you guys can explore that on your own what i want to do is actually start creating some content here so i'm going to navigate back to my navbar.jsx We'll delete this default code, create a nav element, and I simply want to create a white background, a medium sized shadow here, make our nav bar fixed, and our width needs to be 100%. And since we're using a fixed element, we need to manipulate our Z index, make that one, and then we're going to say top zero and left zero. Now we can just hit enter. That will apply all of our classes here. Next, I'll create a div element, apply a max width style of seven extra large, make the left and right margin automatic, add a left and right padding of six, a top and bottom padding of four, make this a flex box, and then we'll specify justify between for our flex box and center our items with items center and go ahead and hit enter and if you guys are ever wondering what these properties are doing you can just go ahead and hover over them and we'll show you exactly what it's doing here next we'll create an anchor element but instead of typing out all the classes from scratch i'll just go ahead and put a period here hit enter and then right here for our href i'll just make this a hashtag 
And then in our class name, once we start typing things up, you guys will see that it helps us with options that we have. So we'll say font semi bold, and then we'll say hover, and we can just say text dash blue, and we wanna use 600 here. And then we wanna change our font to mono. So you guys can see that you can type up the classes from scratch, or you can use the CSS IntelliSense to make it a little bit quicker. Here, we'll just go ahead and put some text. We're gonna call this Tiki Travel. And now I'll go ahead and just paste in my font awesome icon. And since I already have the CDN imported into the index.html, this will work. So if we open this up now, you guys will be able to start seeing it come together a little bit as far as our navigation is concerned. And then underneath this div, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste the rest of my code just to speed this up a little bit. All I have here is an unordered list, a little bit of spacing, text color, and then I have a list element with an anchor element inside of it with a hover text effect. If we go check that out, you guys will see, and it looks like I'm having some kind of issue, so I need to troubleshoot what's going on here. So I accidentally made a mistake here. I actually need to create a div right here. Go ahead and put my anchor element inside of it, like so, and then this unordered list actually needs to go under that particular div for the flex box to be successfully applied to everything. If we go back into our live server, you guys will see it displaying correctly. So really the best way to learn Tailwind CSS is kind of just to play around with the styling. And something that I find a lot faster than scrolling through all the documentation here is simply going into something like ChatGPT and just asking it something like font sizing with Tailwind CSS. And if I enter this, it will most likely give me all of the basic font styling that Tailwind CSS has to offer. And I can simply copy these classes from here instead of having to go over here and scroll through all of this stuff going on. I just find this a little bit faster when I'm developing. And it will even give you some examples down below here and then show you what you might need to do. So now that we have our basic navigation set up, I'm gonna navigate to the hero.jsx and start developing our hero section. And I also need to import an image here. So I'll just go ahead and paste that image I want to use right here within our assets folder. So here I can get rid of this default code. I'm going to create a section, put a period. We want this to be relative and then we want it to be a background cover. Make sure this is also centered and we want it to be the height of our screen. Now we want to use a custom background image. So we'll just say background dash and then we can use our square brackets. And inside of this, we need to specify a URL and point it to where our image is. So in our case, our image is located within our assets and it's palmtrees.jpg. And we're gonna make this a flex box, center our items, justify our items to the center, center our text with the text center class, and we want our background to be blue 500. So now you guys are gonna be able to see that our background hero image is set up and ready to go. Really quick inside of the section, I'll create a div. I want this to be relative. I'm gonna change our Z to 10, change our text, to black, our left and right padding to six, and our background is just gonna be white. And instead of this padding left and right to six, I'm just gonna change that to padding on all four sides and make it 10. And then I want to round the corners, so I'll say rounded, but I only wanna round the top two corners. So I'll specify top and then say four XL. Next, I'll create an H2 element change our text to 3XL. And I can also use Tailwind to create breakpoints. So I'll specify a small breakpoint here where I change the text to 4XL. A medium breakpoint where I change the text to 5XL. I can also change my font to light and specify a margin bottom of four. And I'll change the font to Sarah. Now I can just go ahead and paste in my text and open my live server. You guys can see that displaying. Next, I can create a paragraph element with a margin bottom of six. Go ahead and paste in my text. And after this, I'll create a button element, change the cursor to a pointer, 
Our background will be blue 400 and the text will be black, followed by a padding left and right of six and a padding top and bottom of three. And then we're gonna add a rounded full class here. So we have rounded corners and it looks like I need to type out a little bit more here. So I'll just say rounded full, change our font to semi bold and our hover We'll change our background color to another shade of blue and I'll select 500 and then I can paste in my text and we'll create our last element here. It's just going to be an HR element to create some space at a margin top of eight, a width of 30, an automatic margin and a border top of four, followed by a border of red. 600. So now we have our navigation and our hero successfully set up, but there's one last thing that we need to do here. We need to make this all completely responsive. So we'll go navigate back to the app.jsx and here I'm going to change this fragment to a div instead of just a fragment and then I'll add a class name and I want to specify a few responsive breakpoints. So I'll say text small and then for our medium breakpoint, I'll change it to text large for bigger screens. And if you hover over these, it will show you guys exactly what's going on as far as the media query and the sizing and everything. So now if I go back to my live server here and I inspect this, Go to responsive here. I'll go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. And if I size this up, you guys will see here's the font size for larger devices. And once I get to that first breakpoint, you guys will see that it shrinks down for mobile devices and then back up again for large screens. Congratulations, you just created a React application using Tailwind CSS. If you guys want a more in-depth React tutorial, check out the link in the description. If you guys have any questions or run into any problems, don't be afraid to reach out to me through the comments and I will help you out free of charge. Thanks for watching.